Thank you for joining us. Um, with me tonight is no stranger to Guyana politics and candidate for the PPP 2020 elections, Hugh Todd. Thank you, Thank for, you for being, Peter. Be part of Good our discussion. <laughs> and uh, we know many updates have been happening throughout the day, throughout the weeks. And you, today is no different. We are, you know, E Day, Election Day, is, was 2nd of March. We're still in the unknown territory. We know the reason why. And people are starting to get very, very concerned because now we have both the economic threat downslide our economy, we have the coronavirus threat uh, booming uh, surrounding us, we have the international pressures come in. And today, uh, just for the viewers to know, the National Security Council which is made up of President Trump as a chairperson, chairman. The statutory members are the Secretary of Defense of the United States and the Secretary of State uh, for the United States came out with a message today that talks about regional stability. They will not allow uh, Guyana to fall outside of democracy and freedom. And the, it was probably the strongest message so far and it's coming from the White House itself and probably one of the highest bodies that plans actions against on democratic countries. So I'm not sure what Mr. Granger is thinking when he sees these type of messages, he sees what is happening into our country, yet he fails to concede an election that they have lost. Your thoughts on on the events of today and, and where we're at. Well, Peter, thank you again for having me. I think we're this is our second appearance. I I hope that, that President Granger and his close advisors who are fully much aware um, of what is going to hit us if um, President Granger continues along this path. I think uh, our viewers and listeners need to know that the United States is actually uh, the defender of, of the free world. They've led um, that, that struggle. Um, for free societies globally and the globalization of politics um, led to the democratization of economies within Latin America and the Caribbean, in Africa and also in Asia. So the United States must be commended for their efforts in bringing democracy across the world. And we have to understand that it's an innate um, feeling um, that persons want to be free. They want to live in a society that is free. They want to be able to choose a government for them, by them. And we have enjoyed that between 1992 and 2015. I think what viewers have to understand is that the United States does not meddle um, in your affairs. They're not intervening. They lead the world in terms of, of free democracies. They have extraterritorial jurisdiction, meaning that their national laws apply globally. And whether we like it or not, this is quote unquote America's backyard, right? And it's within their interest to ensure that they they supervise this hemisphere. And regional in, regional instability is a concern. It's a, it's a great concern, yeah. right? And it has a ripple effect. And when instability um, occurs within this region, what happens? America will have to br br uh, face the brunt of it. You see what happened in Latin America. Droves, uh, thousands upon thousands of persons heading for the United States. They want to go there for political asylum um, because they recognize that if things happen within their region, they're going to head there. This is what is going to happen again if you go down that path. Thousands of Guyanese will end up in the United States and Canada asking for asylum. And that is not, that would have, have a, a, an added burden to, to the United States. So it's within their interest to see that we have a peaceful environment nationally mm -hmm. because it has implications for the region itself. So that aside, I believe that President Granger has two options. He can either concede now because he knows the numbers. Um, don't be fooled. He knows the numbers. He knows yeah, uh, that the, the numbers do not favor him. Yeah, on the 13th of May, 2015, mm -hmm. Mr. Granger got on television and says, why is GCOM taking so long? I already kept, added up all my spreadsheets and I know everyone knows who won the election. Yeah. And here he's, he, he refused to 
tell the world where his ADR seventy nine statement of polls exactly are. Exactly my point uh, because he's, he's it's a lot of deceit and he's trying to manipulate the process. He, so he can either concede now or he can recommit to the recount and use that as a graceful exit. There is no there is no other way he can remain in government. I think they've recognized that the net is closing in and they have to face the people of this nation. We are not going to give up. And they would have recognized. We are actually out there 24 hours a day guarding the containers because the future of Ghana is right there. And what happened today in court, I mean, it was a brilliant move by uh, some of the lawyers that asked the judge to tell GCOM to produce Just the statement case. of pose. If they don't want to recount, then produce the statement of pose for the public to see what they use to put those spreadsheets together. And, it, you know, now they're probably going to file another injunction not to give the statement of pose. Why, you know, th this is what is concerned to all of us in Guyana. You know, we said publicly, if here's our statement of pose, you know, not one time has the APNU or any other organization come out and disagree with the 879 statement of post that has been posted because they can't. If you put all of the carbon copies back together, they will all look the same. So if I take the, the OAS copy, the Amchan copy, the European Union copy, PVP copy, change Guyana copy and put them together with APNU and GCOM, it all will look the same. So what? why would they not produce it? If, if six of us have the same copies, uh, we're missing two, and the two is GCOM and the, two, the other one is APNU, then all they got to do is bring it and says, boy, six of you guys are wrong, yeah. and the two of us are right. They can't do that. They can't do that, Peter, because they're playing with the old PNC handbook, right? A handbook that is irrelevant um, and has no place in contemporary politics. And if you look at free democracies across the globe, what we're witnessing here is mind-boggling. Um, this is what, the 21 days since we've cast, uh, since we've went to the polls. The president made it clear to the people of Ghana that he was interested in free, fair, and credible elections. He got that. He got that. He got what he wanted. All of us wanted free, fair, and credible elections. He got that. What is keeping the president from conceding? What all the organizations, OAFs and Carter Center, said they have credible evidence of electoral fraud so he got something out of it credible evidence of electoral fraud and, and interestingly the president continues to say to the people of ghana that gcom is independent leave gcom to do its work he wants gcom to continue to do what gcom knows best which is ensuring that we have free, fair, and credible elections, as well as the tabulation of the, of, the, of the statement of polls. However, what he has failed to do is to condemn the actions of some of the agents within GCOM. We've had the Chief Justice's ruling. She ruled that the tabulation and the declaration of Region 4 was unlawful. Yes. He has not condemned that. Why is he not doing that? He better than file an injunction not to do the recount. Yeah, so he is very insincere. The General Secretary and Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Barak Jagju, said it publicly, he does not trust Granger. And when you have an opposition leader who held off for 12 years, yeah. saying to the people of Ghana and the rest of the world that he does not trust David Granger, it is it's very impactful because they're supposed to be getting along because they are two leaders that we are looking to, to ensure that our democratic values and principles are upheld. And you have a sitting president, albeit in a take care mode, who cannot be trusted. Cannot be trusted. I'm sure if you do uh, uh, if you do a poll now to look at his to look at his approval rating, it should be in a negative by now. He does not have a good rating in Guyana. He does not have a good rating within CARICOM. He does not have a good rating globally. He has been disgraceful to himself and, and, and to Guyana. Well, well, all the numbers are in. So 
all the GCOM numbers and the, the statement of polls are in. We know how difficult it is to really rig an election by through the statement of polls. Mm -hmm. So if Mr. Granger knows he lost the election, you know, I I beg to differ. Which he knows. Which he knows. You know, Dr. Jaglio is really no longer the leader of the opposition. And Mr. Granger may be the leader of the opposition now. But Irfan Ali is the duly president-elect. I mean, the world knows that. I think every guy needs to know that. Even the Apple supporters know something is wrong. The leaders are not telling the truth. It is, it is, what is, what is a brave concerns though? Because the honesty and decency that Mr. Granger have his picture all over Guyana. I always, you know, remind myself what President Carter told one dictator. He says to Mr. Norega, who is, was the dictator in Panama, before they took him out and took him to Miami and put him in a jail was, are you an honest man or are you a thief? Now, Mr. Granger knows, as you said, his 879 statement of polls. He said it in 2015 that he did it. He watches PNC add up the 879 statement of polls or whatever number it was in, in 2015. They knew they had won the election across the year. All the statement of polls, they added up. So they were able to push the same polls. PP did the same thing. And at the end of it all, the PP conceded very, very quietly and, and handed power to Mr. Granger. Here now is the opposite. And he lost, he got less votes in 2020 than he got in 2015. The PP got all, I think, all of the new um, voters that were turned 18 that voted for the first time, I think, voted for the PP. If you look at the numbers across Guyana, nine regions, you know, the PP was in the lead by 50,000 plus votes. That's, that was massive. And in Region 4, they closed the gap significantly. And what surprised Mr. Granger, I think, after March 2nd, is was he didn't expect that Region 4 and George Sun, South George Young, and those people did, didn't go and vote for him. And by that shock, he knew that they had lost. And his only best next step is to, you know, facilitate allow support the rigging process and you know peter it's interesting that you said that um but to add to what you you just said what we have to understand is that the pnc is no stranger to Guyana. the pnc is good at rigging elections the pnc believes in dictatorship they don't believe in accepting the will of the people they believe in in, in imposing themselves on the people um, that time has passed. So I think what Granger and his advisors wanted to do from the time they got into office is to control the elections machinery. To ensure, yes, yes. to ensure that once they go to an election, they will be able to manufacture a result that would give them a victory. They knew that the, the, the victory that they got in 2015 was not a solid victory because we contested it we have a petitioning court that was still not um, brought to the courts and they knew that they lost that elections so they knew that if they if they survived the, the five years which it did not survive because we we, we, yeah, no we had a, a successful yeah. no confidence motion passed they knew that they had to find a way to control chicom because it's not just about polling but it's about who is going to declare the winner, right? So they went to great lengths to unilaterally appoint a chair and they managed to also have a few layers um, in place to support them. Yes. So even though we got rid of partisan, they, we still have the CEO, the deputy CEO, the deputy CEO a lot of the clerks. and other persons who we not know of who were there to help to facilitate a victory for the for, for the PNC. What they did not realize is that our electoral democracy was a bit more mature than they thought it was, right? We are open to scrutiny globally. We committed to democracy and democratic principles and values, right? That is how we're able to make friends, mm -hmm. keep friends, do business globally. They miscalculated that. For some strange reason, they believed they could have rigged the elections in front of the world and still get away with it. 
it is a strange mind that can conceive of such things. And it bothers me that we have people around in this contemporary era who believe that they can get away with that. And if you listen to the statements coming out of the State Department, they were very explicit. In and it's all, I mean, it's all the organizations. Yes. I mean, the OAS is, you know, what, 24 countries? The European Union? You are 27, well, 26 the, now, yeah, I believe. The Commonwealth is 54. Commonwealth 54. So, know, more than half the world. 15 countries plus. The, yeah, over 100 countries. More than half the world. Yes, in, I've said electoral fraud. A lot of them have talked about a peaceful transition to... Uh, to democracy. To democracy, peaceful transition of government. They didn't say, you know, swearing back the incumbent. And that's implicit that yeah. they've lost. They've lost. <laughs> because, I mean, what, what we got to understand, and what, what our new supporters need to understand too, is that the observers signed a copy of the Statement of Polls. They were at hundreds of polling stations around Region 4 and around the country. Each observer signed, the polling agent signed for the PP, the polling agent signed for APNU, the presiding officer signed for GCOM. So they all had the same statement of post. So when they went back to their office and their, they tabulated the results themselves. Amcham tabulated all their results and their numbers showed very similar to what the PP numbers show. Yes. It's a 114 to 80,000 yes. for Region 4. When you now add those votes on to the 50,000 lead in all the other regions, the PP won this election, not by a single one seat yes. or two seat, by three seats. Yes. And the small party got one seat. So it's literally a four seat majority from APNU. And yes. the, the, the other part that I think is, is, is uh, enlightening in the last two days is that two of the coalition partners, WPA mm -hmm. and the Justice Party, have yeah. come out from the coalition and says, let's do the recount. We don't feel we won the election. Let's do the recount because something is wrong. The son-in-law we know of, of Mr. Granger have said the same thing. That means his daughter most likely agreed and said the same thing. So the world, you know, and then the, the peddling of some of them saying like it's a conspiracy against APNU. Come on. Every, every organization, six out of the eight sheets in that SOP matches. Yes. Right? The only two that have not shown the two copies is GCOM and APNU. You have to ask yourself why. Why would six other parties, including the observer groups, show their copy? Yes, and, and Peter, to to make matters worse, March fifth, Clement Mingo, the RO for Region Four, made an unlawful declaration. The court ruled that he needs to go to the source documents, which would be the statements of poll. He went back on March thirteenth and did the exact same thing. I think right. he had a few more right. numbers for him. But, <laughs> right. In some cases, you had more votes than the number of electorate. Added to that, right? So we, 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 we conclude that GCOM has been compromised, at least at the higher hierarchy of GCOM. Then we then we we can we can also conclude that they they they, they, they were political interference. Because Vola Lawrence's signature was on the declaration for region and mingo may, may right. tell the world why he asked while the lawrence to sign it why is there security <laughs> yeah. so the president uh, yeah. did not come out condemn and explain no. or condemn the chairman of gcom the ceo of gcom right something is amiss no we are not and the second declaration he had the candidate from region five yeah it, joseph it. signed it and there's no requirement for exactly. a signature on the RO is the only sole authority. It is nasty, it's distasteful, and it's, it's, it's very shameful that we are have to go through this. It is, it is not what we signed up for. We are a democratic society. Our votes must be counted, and it must reflect the will of the people. We cannot proceed. If we fail at achieving electoral democracy, everything else will crumble, right? Because David Granger is going to go into full dictatorship. I always say to people that David Granger possesses the characteristics of a psychological fox, right? Which is a political theory. And if you look at his actions 
from the time they got into office, the deceit, manipulation, coercion, they all fit into the mold of, of a dictator. If he succeeds with dismantling our electoral democracy, he will emerge into a psychological liar. liar. And that is very harmful to Guyana because he will command and capture the entire economy. Luckily for us, the people of Ghana, we are not going to accept that. And if you look at how, 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 how our, our resolve and you look at our resilience, uh, we are more enlightened now. And people on either side want to see a credible result. Their supporters, APNO AFC supporters, those who are thinking objectively, they're bowing their heads in shame. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of them are coming out yeah, one by one. I mean, you know, they're, when they're they're the, speaking out, uh, not publicly, but yeah. they're they're talking. But to some you. of them, I mean, so sure that Ramphal came out today and says we are going into a failed state. Here's a man that was a former PNC minister under the dictatorship government of uh, Bornham, 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 and he come out today, basically, you know, forty years later, and says, you know. Democracy is at risk. We're going to go down a failed state approach if Mr. Granger doesn't stand up and concede or at least let the recount happen. I mean, they're, they're, it's very simple. And, and you're right, though, a lot of the supporters out there are questioning. They, they all, all of us, you know, we all have our, our right to vote. We all support our candidate. We all, we all would love our candidate to win, you know, but up, an understanding democracy, you know, they lost. And the Apple supporters need to know that that's not the end of, of it for them. I mean, Dr. Irfan Ali, as the duly president elect, have said many times in his and in his in his in his manifesto, he talks about an inc inclusive governance model of his government. He talks about an equal opportunity president. He talks about development plans across every region in Guyana. And so, we all as Guyanese have a lot to look forward to given we get past this here very quickly. What we don't want, and what Mr. Granger is very being very dishonest about and and he's put our country at risk, is none of us want the US sanctions or other sanctions against Guyana. We want we are in an exciting period of future development, given the, the oil industry, given you know our development plans and our manifesto, we are ready to take off in a new Guyana. Why would Mr. Granger, if he's an honest and decent man, as he said, why would he do this to, to our country? And, and no sanctions, personal sanctions. If if any of somebody look at the, the, the message today from the National Security Council of the White House, and you believe that you, if Mr. Granger so happened to swear himself in, and you take a position within that government, or you were part a uh, parcel of the GCOM fraud, you're part and parcel of the political fraud. The, those sanctions go past you. It's not just visas. People think it's just visas. Yeah. Visas is just one method. Visas is a method where they take away the entire family. So if if, if a minute a former minister have a, a daughter or a son in the United States that has a visa and they take a position, that person comes home tomorrow. Yes. The assets, if you own a property in Florida or you have bank accounts because you're in the trade business or you're a contractor in Guyana that have put assets in both both countries, all those things are frozen. Yes. And so the personal side will happen. And, and it is not something to wonder. I mean, the Secretary of State statements is very powerful. Now the fact that we have moved to the National Security Council, that means we have moved to the military and the, the security of the United States of America. We are affecting America backyard. And that was the most powerful statement coming from the Secretary of Defense, coming from the Secretary of State, and coming from President Trump, that we are messing with regional stability and America feels threatened in their backyard if Mr. Granger continue to disobey basic democratic policy and the rule of law. Yes, Peter, well said. And adding to what you just mentioned, when democracy prevails, everyone wins. And that is what we need to understand. It doesn't matter whether you voted for the list of the APNO AFC or the list of the People's Progressive Party Civic or any other small party. Once the will of the people mm -hmm. is accepted, recorded, then 
Guyana will win because you will get a government that you can hold accountable. A government that you can be part of the political process. Under a PNC-led coalition government, you will never be part of that process. And if you look at, at David Granger's actions from the time he took office, he has never consulted with the people of Guyana. No. Every action that he took was in the interest of the PNC. And if you look, he has never, he has never acted in any swift manner on matters that has to deal matters that, that, that treat that has to do with the people of Guyana. When it comes to any issue that concerns his party, he moves swiftly. So he'd raise their salaries, he would give them an unlimited per diem, he would give ensure away, give away their dietary week, yeah. um, budget, lands. So the people of Guyana, have to, they need to understand he is only serving the PNC. Volga Lawrence was very explicit in that. She said it quite clearly that they're only concerned with giving jobs to PNC people. So Guyana for David Granger is the PNC, not everyone. And that is what we face with. We face with a president who is only concerned with the PNC and party paramountcy. He's not concerned well, uh, uh, with the people. Not, of not even the entire PNC. It's just well, like the an elite, elite group. The elite, elite group. a very small group small of people. Group. Yeah. Right. Right. The ordinary person out there lost their jobs. A lot of PNC supporters, worshipper workers too, lost their exactly. jobs. He didn't care. He thinks that it's their low life. Yeah. Right? He can drive his 18 beautiful cars on the road and have the horses guard him, but he didn't care that that it's about a multi-ethnic sugar industry that he fired. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about the Amerindians he fired. He, yes. and a lot of those were PNC supporters. And so he didn't care about the PNC. He cared about an elite group and he continues to, to do that right now with, with his yes. failure. You know, and going back to Father Lawrence, because we need to be able to expose those that are, that are, that are, are part of this cabal. I was there in GCOM. And there's a picture that proves it out on the internet where she went to the GCOM desk at the computer with the GCOM statement of polls and were punching numbers. It's alarming. It's alarming. And the fact is she got on those steps and yelled at us saying, we will never get power. That she and the PNC and Abdul will do whatever it takes to take power. That's what she said on those steps. The tape is available. They will do whatever it takes to remain in power and we will never get that again. That is blatant anti-democratic and that's why, you know, it's interesting enough, we've got credible evidence of electoral fraud, but the OAS have credible evidence of electoral fraud. The United States have credible evidence of electoral fraud. So, you know, somebody better start coming clean. You know, Mr. Mingo, if he's listening, you know, he's, he's the best one to to come out right away and say something. He made Val Lauren sign the darn form. Maybe he wants to tell the world what he did. Yeah. And, and hopefully he comes out. If he wants to save himself, now is the time to speak. Don't wait till all of them start falling. They're going to throw him under the bus. Yeah. So if he's got something to tell us, he needs to tell us why he presented that declaration. When he in court said he didn't know where it came from too. So the, the, the fraud is, is widening in, yes, in GCOM. Yes. And, and, and Peter, you have, when we look at the, at the PNC as a political party, they've always been irresponsible, in and out of office. And I think the first and second time voters and the young generation, I think they, they are now fully convinced <laughs> that the PNC has no place in, in our political future. Yeah. And the uh, fact that they lost votes from 2015 exactly. showed that, that even their own supporters exactly. felt disgusted that they exactly. did not deliver. I mean, it, and they, one of the things they campaigned on 2015 was constitutional reform. They went full blast on constitutional reform. Five years, nothing happened. Now that they are in the, in the mode that they're in, they want to talk about power sharing and, and other means of yes. getting into government through the back door. But in five years, they, ne they never projected that, uh, is it, that theory. Yes, it's interesting you talk about getting to power through the back door because that is the only, that's the only route they've 
used to get into power because Reagan elections between 1968 through 1985, they entered power through the back door and they're trying to attend that again. The only time they did it lawfully was in 64 when they when when they coalesced with, 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 with the UF yeah, yeah. and this time in 2015 when they pulled a, a, together a few smaller parties along with the, with the AFC. Yeah, so the people of Ghana need to understand that the PNC has never as a single party enjoy majority support. We on the other hand, the People's Progressive Party Civic, we have always enjoyed majority support as an inclusive party. So when you hear the PNC talking about, oh, they're concerned about ethnic inclusivity, that is Bangladesh because they practice ethno politics by exclusion. They're the ones who push the race vote. They're the ones who try to keep the ordinary supporter insulated away from 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 the rest of society and that is why they have been able to to control their support base but that is winning because people are now asking themselves we have enjoyed good times under the people's progressive party civic yeah. between 1992 and 2015 what was the PNC telling us so, something is amiss? Yeah, a lot they of them making the connection. A lot of them didn't do well economically over the last five years, yes. and that's why I think a lot, a lot of their supporters went to the PP this time. Exactly. Around. When you look, when you look at the the, the People's Progressive Party civics uh, development model, you will see that we practice ethnic inclusivity. We are diverse. It's a multi-party, yeah. and, and and a lot of their 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 supporters they have to understand the genesis of this, right? Forrest Barnum was a member of the People's Progressive uh, uh, Party. Party. Founder, yeah. right? He was an executive member. He wanted power and he broke away. Right In 1957, the party was split. But people recognized that Chetty Javan was the leader that they will follow. We were able to keep the party together. Barnum went, to, went, to, went his way and then and, and formed the PNC and they never performed well. Yeah. Never ever. So the party itself is a fundamentally flawed party. And the bankrupt the economy because of they, exactly, 1992. Because and the bankrupt the economy almost yes, to the level of The genesis was based on political opportunism. Yeah. We were built around the support of the ordinary man. We've never strayed away from that. And that is why you will always get people coming to us because they know that we care about them and the results of the 2020 March 2nd elections is a clear demonstration that the people of Guyana want to see a People's Progressive Party civic government. Yeah, and they did give them, and, and Mr. Granger should be thankful, he did get a chance should be to, thankful. Yeah, to prove <laughs> to the rest of the world maybe he was different than Boredom, but he actually proved to the rest of the world that he's no different than what the, the PNC grew up in. No different at all. I mean, to rig the election in national television to the wider world. Mr. Granger, you've got to be sitting there. I know you're an old man and maybe you're sleeping already. But the fact is, you've got to wonder when you go to bed at the night, how did I not rig this thing? How did Barnum do it and I can't do it? It's clear. <laughs> Barnum did it because of behind neglect from the United States and the West. So when people talk about if Barnum was alive, this would not have happened. Barnum could not change this. You can bring the best on, the, on that side. It would not happen because we are still a price taker and a rule taker. We are still in the dependency mode. We have achieved political independence. We have never been able to achieve economic independence. And credit to the PNC. If the PPP was able to run this country, we would have already, had, we've already been in the second wave of in industrial revolution. We tried to do that with the Milo Falls. What did they do? They stopped, when they, they stopped yeah. it. Right? So people have oh, to understand. Oh, it had cheaper energy today. Exactly. People don't realize what we're paying people for electricity. And that project wasn't even funded by the Ghana government. It was funded by the international community. Exactly. To stop a project like that was, uh, it was against the people of Guyana. So that we wouldn't benefit in the future. Not the PPP. It's Guyanese would have benefited from cheaper energy. And, and, and look at this. Look at the start speeder. The APNO FC combined controlled the National Assembly in 2011, right? They stymied all of the Project. developmental projects. Yeah. They got into office in 2015. And what did they do? Nothing for the people. 
right? That is why we're successful in that no confidence um, vote, right? Look what they did following that. They did everything to hold on to the power. Yes. So the demise of the of the of the coalition government started from the time they got into office because they never fulfilled their promises in the manifesto and they did not care about the people of Ghana. Yeah, they, they, they give themselves salary increases, they raise taxes, they shut down a couple of the major industries in Guyana. We were struggling in mining. They we were struggling in other sectors, exactly. Yeah. And high taxes. They, they dream about the oil and now that dream is being affected by, by them again because you know we should have already been started on the new development plan. Granger talked about decade of development. He forgot to use the, the con of the decade. You know, he's trying to con his way into government and it, it, it didn't work. And, and the Americans are, are, are looking keenly because one of the, one of the major uh, tenets of, of democracy in the neoliberal economic model is foreign direct investment. We have said to the Americans in the West that we're open for business, right? And to do that, you have to show that you're going to adhere to democratic principles and values. What Granger is doing right now is telling the Americans in the West that here, we don't care about that. We are in control and we will do everything within our power to remain in office. That has dire consequences for foreign direct investment. Exxon would have invested billions of dollars already. They, I'm sure that Exxon is worried about nationalization. Absolutely. I'm sure it investors in are worried about yeah. expropriation. This has far-reaching effects, and that is why we have to nip it in the bud. And the people of Guyana are united. We are singing from one hymn sheet, sheet because we need to guard our democracy. This is not about PPP, PNC, ANOG, GLP anymore. This is a national issue. This is our opportunity to defend democracy and allow the will of the people yeah. to emerge. And, and that's we have where, to respect that. And it, I, I, you said it right. It's across the divide now, political divide now. A lot of people know Guyanese are love each other. I mean, we get along well. Very peaceful. Very peaceful people. I mean, we all the five years we get along well. Politically, we may go vote down different different lines and different candidates and different ideology. But at the end of it all, we all get back and we start working together. So. The elite of the PNC that is that is continuing to defy yes. democracy is not speaking on behalf of all Guyanese. Because if you go to a PNC supporter right now that have lost their job because they've been laid off because of the virus, because of the economic decline that is going on in our country, they can tell you, get it over with. Come on. If 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 you lost the election, get out. You know, five years from now, come and ask me back for your vote. But don't let me lose my job and my money because you are holding on to power. Yes. And it's, it's reality. And, you know, for those watching out there, and you know, now we have the threat of, of the virus. You know, we all have to be safe and protect ourselves. But instead of being compassionate, you know, if I, I read maybe 15 statements throughout the world where the, the government have talked about the, the COVID-19 virus and what they plan to do. I mean, they're, they're, it's compassionate. They, they make sure the treatment are there. They make sure they have enough tests, equipment. They, if they got to isolate, they isolate. Whatever. You know, Granger comes out with an executive order. N nowhere in there was compassion. He said, if you have the, the virus or they believe you have the virus, they'll come and burn your house down, destroy your house, destroy your property, take you. If you die, cremate you. All, in, all within a matter of minutes, you know. And instead of telling me, you know what, Peter, make sure that you protect, make sure you wash your hands, make sure you do the right thing, stay away from large crowds, don't travel, you know, give me some hope that I can survive this virus. Instead, I'm more worried I'm coming in my house now and assuming that I have something and, and burn my property down okay. using political hammer. And they give Walter Lawrence the executive authority to do that. Peter, because that is so because dictators don't believe in democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. So they will exploit any situation to their benefit. And people of Ghana need to understand that when David Granger sits to have discussions, he is not formulating policies to satisfy each and every Guyanese. They're just 
but a number to him. A number because he can extract taxes from them to make the, the, the party a stronger party. So from the time they got into office, they focused on the consolidation of power, right? And they went about trying to corrupt our democratic institutions. People have to understand that GCOM is a democratic institution. It is independent to the extent that it should be buffered from in political interference. So when David Granger say that GCOM is independent, he is saying to the people of Ghana that GCOM is independent to the extent that they can do whatever they see fit. That is not what GCOM is supposed to no. do. GCOM is supposed to operate within the confines of the law. Claremont Mingo has been operating outside the confines of the law. And David Granger has not, for one instance so far, come out and condemned the actions of, 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 of Mingo. And that is because GCOM is manufacturing a result that he is comfortable with. And that is what we have to be concerned with. He has already agreed to the recount. Our General Secretary, Dr. Barry Jagdil, has agreed. The Chairman of GCOM has, has agreed. agreed. The Chief we went, Justice said, Yes, we, we invited CARICOM. We were a major player in CARICOM. David Granger has embarrassed himself in an institution that we have helped to create. Sandra Granger, they have you're listening to Mr. Right here. here. You need to tell your husband what he's doing. The headquarters is right here. Yeah. <laughs> he is embarrassing himself. And we have to understand that even though people outside will be looking and thinking that Ghana is a mess, it is one man. Who can bring all of this to an end, you know? One man. So, I don't want the people of Ghana to believe that what David Grange is doing is a reflection of who we are. I we are law-abiding, upstanding people. We don't want that. We don't agree with what he's doing. Yeah. But because he's still the president until the new president is sworn in, which is Dr. Irfan Ali, we have to depend on him to do the right thing and follow the rule of law allow the recount to start immediately and concede because they know the end result. We know the unofficial results. Our General Secretary also has already made it clear that we have won the elections, but he is not in authority to make the official declaration. We have to follow the process and that is why we are calm. That is why we are waiting for the recount process to start so that we can open the containers open the containers if they want to begin with region 1 or region 10 but we need to get to region 4 because that is the, the the electoral district that is in contention once we get through that GCOM will be able to go ahead and make the official declaration so that we can have the new president sworn in and this is going to be all done tomorrow if Mr. Mingo show up to the court with 879 GCOM authentic statement of post that could be verified we may never need to get to the box. He has the authority to bring the real statement of polls and, and tabulate them in front of the world and, and declare the right results. He has an opportunity. The court is giving him the opportunity to be able to, to rectify what GCOM has done. Yes. People will still pay the price for the electoral fraud. But, <laughs> you know, it. But I, I like what you said. You The fact is the world sees us in an embarrassing situation. You know, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora and around the world think that, you know, while Ghana is a banana republic and we, you know, don't have the democratic institutions, we are, you know, but you're right though, it's one man, David Granger, that knows he lost the election, the, the, the few in GCOM that have done the electoral fraud that has embarrassed the country in front of the world, is not, we, we have, you know, a very thriving private sector. Yes. You know, we, we got a, a future economic boom in our country with oil and natural gas. We have the development plans of the PVP that will bring about development in areas in agriculture, in tourism, in mining, in, 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 in um, you know, plantation, uh, agriculture, in, in cattle farming. All those things we have to look forward to as we modify the, the plans to embrace our new found wealth and how do we utilize that to make every Guyanese benefit from us. And that's what Dr. Ali brings to the table, is that view of an equal opportunity president, an inclusive president. So when we have allowed 
and I say we because you know Mr. Granger needs to understand that he has gotten away with it so far but the people of Guyana is standing up when you see every night people from all walks of life going at the container and watching those locks to make sure those locks didn't move because they feel it here you they feel it here this is this is their democracy this is their vote one of the reasons why they are so vigilant and why they're so committed to the process is because they are convinced that Dr. Fanali is their president um, and they're, they're guarding their democracy. And even if it wasn't for the, the, the threat of the virus, you would have had hundreds of thousands of yeah. people out there. Yes. You and, know? And, it's, and, and I think, I think that, uh, that, that David Granger and, and his cabal, I think they're, I think they're, they're, they're very uncomfortable in this, in this environment. I think um, it's a lot of arrogance that is playing out. I think they miscalculated the global environment in the regional context um and i don't think that they are at the level at which they can really be prepared to run a country again because i i don't understand how they can think that they can commit to democracy be elected through a democratic process and then in the same breath try to hold on to office using undemocratic means Something is wrong with the thinking. And the ideology know, is, yeah. is misplaced. And I know those those people that voted for Mr. Granger did not bargain for this at all. Oh, I mean, no. a lot of the, no, no, the no, no. people that voted for Mr. did not bargain that they will suffer because they put their vote next to him. They hoped that he had won. He didn't win. They want to move on with their lives. They yes. want. I, I talk to many, many PNC people out there every single day. Apple supporters, AFC supporters. They want to move on with their life. They of know course, yes. that they've lost. They're upset that they've lost. They, they feel sad that they've lost. But they now are looking in their homes. You know, I watched today a company that has about thirty people um, sent all thirty home because. The business can't operate. There's no goods coming in to the market. There are no goods can be sold. The inventory is down. 30 people I saw today have been laid off. And those 30 comes across all sections of our society. So Mr. Granger could understand he's got to, to the, the, so far the power is in his hands. It's coming out of his hands very quickly. If they continue with the, the failed process, if he fakes his way into swearing in, and I, I would tell any, any person of, of caliber that looking for position in government just read the national security council uh, memo today you know when you have president trump himself the national security advisor the secretary of defense the secretary of state saying do not affect regional stability guyana get on with your democratic principles finish the election process transition to a new government if you don't need anything more than that we want Diana to move forward and Dr. Irfan Ali is ready to be sworn in. Yes. He, is, he is ready to, to take Diana forward in the, the next five years to put, you know, he's going to have a, an election in five years. So Dr. Ali knows that he's got to make sure that some of the things that, that APNU supporters may have desire out of Mr. Granger, he has said he is going to look at all the inclusive policies to make sure areas where those people did not vote for him and the reason why they did not vote he wants to make sure that he yes. delivers for them also yes. and that is a commitment that is i think a patriot of dr Irfan Ali saying i want to commit to Guyana. i want to commit to all Guyanese. and in five years when i come to you again to say i would like your vote this time pnc supporters mm -hmm. that you will be willing to give it to him because he will deliver for you and that's what we got to look forward to yes i, I agree totally and i think i think president granger by now should be convinced that all he needs to do is to withdraw the court action because clearly as the general secretary said his minions are the ones who are trying to keep trying it alive to keep the yeah. process alive and and, and tell gcom to do the right thing because i know that they have political influence in gcom and recommit to the to the to the recount um, of region four and by extension they can do the other regions so that they can demit office yeah and the chairperson and the chairperson has the authority right now with the commission to even go 
to the recount. She needs to step up. Yeah, I mean, Tai Chor knows if you haven't read it today, have the law. It shows that the commission has authority over the secretariat. So the commission can direct the secretariat to go back to the tabulation process, re-verify the, the statement of polls, open the boxes if you need to, and get on with it. We, we really didn't need a judge to tell us that. The chairperson has that authority to do it. Yeah, and this commission. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that we didn't need a judge to do that because in, when you go back to the no confidence vote, they went to the, to the high court and they got, they got a decision. It's a crazy decision, yeah. Um, I think they believe that they can repeat that. But the odds are against them. They don't have the time and the space um, to hang on to office. They have to bring this process to a conclusion soon. You know, we can, I mean, technically, from the no confidence vote to now, we have really had an illegal government by all uh, of the law. Shameful. We cannot continue going forward with an illegal, illegal government, an illegitimate government. Mr. Granger knows, you know, don't look for some loophole to swear yourself in. And I hope the Chancellor is smarter than that, that, you know, Mr. Loyfield is going to be on the stick. If he takes any of that information from Mr. Mingo and declare the election result, you know, I go back to, to the Western world and, and all of the 100 plus countries, they are playing, you know, they're, but the sad part you is why would they do that to us? You know, Guyanese want a better life. We all want to move back to, we want to be able to fight this virus, make sure that we don't get affected. We do the right things as a country, as a government, as a people. Why would Mr. Granger put all of us at risk for the stupidity of wanting to steal an election when you know you lost the election. Because he's acting in the interest of the PNC, not in the interest of Guyana. And that is sad that they still hold on to that ideology. Um, it's disgraceful, it's distasteful, and it has no place um, in the contemporary era. And what people have to understand is that democracy is a system. Um, and if you don't comply with democratic rules and values, you would not be able to hold on to your partners. You would not be able to attract foreign direct investment because we're playing within the rules of global politics and economics, and we cannot be isolated. We are open for business. We have an open environment and we cannot survive on our own. And if we don't get past this electoral process, we will not be able to enjoy the benefits that we've enjoyed previously. And that is standard. And people have to understand that what is what you see happening now with the OAS, uh, the EU, um, the Americans, that is part of global governance, right? Even though we are a nation state and we have sovereignty, because we commit to certain principles, values, and institutions, we have to play by the rules. David Granger is not playing by the rules. And that is why they're coming out in ex explicitly in saying to David Granger, do the right thing. If you want to have a relationship with us or to continue relationship with us, you have to do the right thing. You have to adhere to democratic principles and values. That is your first point of entry. If you don't do that, you will face severe consequences, beginning with personal sanctions. And I don't think they can withstand personal sanctions, my friend, because we all know that they are traditional partners. Many of many of the representatives on the other side, they have families in the United States. Yeah. Canada, and even, even some of our... They have investments. Our GRA head is a U.S. citizen. Yeah, he, yeah. His assets would be frozen yeah. if he continued they his job. They have to job. play by the rules. Vincent Adams, I think, is, is the and EPA. You know, and you know, interesting, Peter, I want to make this statement, yeah. this point. We have a lot of executives in Guyana who are dual citizens, who would have lived abroad in the United States, in Canada, for example, for many years. Mm -hmm. They were able to enjoy the freedoms that they've enjoyed. They were able to build their careers mm -hmm. and become very successful in a free and democratic society. They came back to Guyana under this administration and took up Position. big appointments. Yes. None of them, not one, at least not to my knowledge, would have resigned and said to the people of Ghana, this is not what I signed up for. I believe in democracy, I believe in democratic values and principles, and I could I cannot Condone, yeah. hold on to a job in a dictatorship where the people of Ghana are being their rights are being trampled upon. It's amazing. But a lot of them privately, 
have said they're they gone. need to resign. They're, they're yeah, they're. As long as the Granger swears it in, swears himself in for whatever reason, they should do it before. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and because they call, know that they've lost. We call on a lot of them. I mean, I mentioned the GRA head, the boss, and and a couple others out there. They know where they stand. If they're going to work every day, knowing the fact that that we are in a, in an illegal status, um, you know, we've got to get it over with. Any last thoughts? Closing. I my my. I just have three words uh, for Mr. Granger. Recount. Recount, recount. We are waiting for you as president to do the right thing, to abide by the rule of law, to tell your cabal that you are moving in the right direction in the interest of the people of this country, and you need to do the right thing. You cannot allow yourself to be constrained or restrained, so step out. You have the office, you can do it. Step out, do the writing, recommit to the recount of Region 4, and by extension, the other regions, so that we can allow the will of the people to be heard and a new president sworn in as soon as possible. It is within your hands, and you have the, 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 the opportunity to do it time you still have time so please mr granger do the right thing by the people for once thank you you it's been a pleasure being here i know the old man granger is sleeping so you know i'm talking to mrs mrs granger if you're around and awake you need to tell the old man it's time to allow guyana back to what we believe in true democracy true the rule of law it's time for him to concede I'm excited about President-elect Irfan Ali taking the reins of government as soon as possible. We've got a lot of work to do to bring back some of the main industries in Guyana. We've got to combat the, the COVID-19 virus. We've got to look at our economic plans and rethink our approaches given, given the global economic crisis. We cannot allow electoral issues anymore. We've got a bigger issue ahead of us. We've got to make sure our people survive economically. We've got to get on with, with, with new plans and new development uh, processes to take place. We've got industries to rebuild. We've got to make sure 30,000 people get back their jobs. We've got to now worry about the other 30,000 that will be laid off because of the economic crisis, because of the, the COVID-19. There's so much to be done in Guyana, Mr. Granger, and you sitting back there driving your 18 cars and, and worry about whether the PNC is rigging the election and how they're rigging the election and trying to get away with it through the court system is not going to go well with all of Guyana. So it's time for you to, to do the right thing, as Mr. Todd said. Get up tomorrow. Let Mr. Mingo take 879 statement of polls to the judge office tomorrow. Let them see the real copies. And let's get on with the business of running our country. Concede and allow Dr. Irfan Ali to be sworn in as the duly elected president for the Corporative Republic of Guyana. Thank you and God bless you. Okay.